Hello. This is a modified version of the file that I posted the other night on uh, YouTube. This is the maximum rate of climb test that I did on my Hel Helicycle uh, N750 Golf. This one has video as well as stills. I did the testing at South County Airport, uh, the south end of the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. The field elevation is about 280 feet. The temperature was about 65 or 70 F. I started out the test with 20 gallons of fuel on board and I weigh about 165 to 170. So the helicopter was fairly close to its max gross weight with all that fuel on board. Uh, during the test I tried to maintain a climb speed of 75 miles an hour. Here's a still shot towards the end of the test and I want to point out where the instruments and the uh, the warning indicators are and then I'll play you the video and then we'll go back and uh, look at the instruments in detail. Over here on the left is the VSI, the vertical speed indicator and you can see uh, right now it's indicating about 1700 feet per minute climb this is the fuel flow indicator and you're looking at about a little over 16 gallons per hour. Over here is my exhaust gas temperature and this is indicating about 900 degrees. The two uh, warning lamps to keep track of are the low rotor up here and engine RPM warning down here. This one will go off if the engine RPM is either too low or too high. The idea being here that if uh, this light goes off by itself, the belt's slipping. If they both go off, then I'm loading down the engine and the RPM is dropping. And of course this is my airspeed over here. So the airspeed I'm trying to maintain uh, during this test is with a needle pointed straight down at 75 uh, miles per hour. So now we'll go ahead look at the video which doesn't take very long and then I'll come back and uh, look at each one of those instruments and, and uh, try and put some meaning to them. Here you can see I'm trying to stay underneath the uh, height velocity curve by getting my speed up before I start my climb. And during the climb, you'll notice that the vertical speed indicator over on the left is just slowly creeping up as I slowly add more and more collective. peak right there and then uh, I lowered the collective uh, and I started to level off at about uh, 1100 feet. That still I showed you uh, was snapped uh, several seconds before uh, where this video ended. Uh, this particular camera which is a GoPro uh, 3 can take stills and video simultaneously so it was snapping stills every five seconds. Uh, I, I bracketed the, uh, the point of maximum rate of climb. Uh, the still that you see was slightly before I reached the maximum and the one after was after I'd already lowered the collective. So uh, if you watch this video closely you see it, it uh, peaked up just for a few seconds and then as soon as I got where I was going I lowered the collective again. Uh, my initial intention was to keep going until a warning light came on, either the uh, low rotor indicating belt slip or both of them indicating the engine was running out of uh, power, running out of fuel basically and not able to maintain the power uh, that I was requesting. But once I got up to uh, pattern altitude and I'd reached uh, 1700 feet per minute of climb, uh, I felt that the, the ship was pretty much maxed out. I'd accomplished what I had intended to do and so I backed off. I never did see a warning light.
And this shot on the left is just a blow up of the vertical speed indicator from that still shot that I showed earlier. On the right is just a clean picture of the indicator so you can see clearly uh, how it's laid out. So again, this shot was taken uh, slightly before uh, I peaked, which was a, more, uh, a little bit more rate of climb than, uh, than the indicator shows. A good 1,700 feet per minute. Here's the same idea with the fuel flow. Uh, on the left is a blow up of the, uh, of the fuel flow indicator from that same still. On the right is a clean picture of uh, how it looked back when I took that picture. It's a little misleading because I changed the uh, yellow and red bands around a little bit. Uh, but you can see on the left, I'm I'm uh, consuming about 16.2 gallons per hour, and based on uh, a rough 6.6 .6, uh, pounds per gallon, which sort of uh, is in the middle of the range for Jet A, depending on the formulation, uh, that comes up to a burn rate of 107 pounds per hour. Here's the exhaust gas temperature. I flip things around a little bit. The blow up is on the right. You can see that it says 900. On the left is a test I ran uh, uh, several months ago uh, using a precision uh, a thermocouple, which was uh, mounted directly in physical contact with the ship's thermocouple. So the actual temperature of those two uh, during this test was 664.9 F. And you can see that the indicator shows just slightly over 600. So if we use a correction factor, say, of uh, 50, just to round it off, add 50 to what the needle says, I'm uh, saying that the actual EGT was 950 F. So based on those three readings uh, and pulling this chart out of the engine overhaul manual, I basically annotated this graph with the red lines uh, pulled from the data that I gathered during my test. So these slanted lines that you see going this way represent different exhaust gas temperatures. Here's 1100 degrees, here's 1000 degrees, here's 900 degrees. So based on uh, that offset that I just showed you between my precision uh, uh, reading and what the indicator uh, indicated, I'm saying that the actual EGT was 950. So it would be halfway between the 1000 and the 900 F. And here's that line right here. So that's my exhaust gas temperature in degrees F. My fuel burn in pounds per hour, I calculate is about 107. So part way between the 120 and the 100 here. So I tried to uh, draw in a line that was slightly less than halfway between those two to represent 107 pounds per hour. And then finally, compressor inlet temperature. Uh, again, I didn't I didn't measure it, but it was it was fairly chilly and breezy and very gusty and windy. So I'm estimating about 65 or 70 degrees uh, temperature uh, at the field, and that's this vertical line up here, 70 F. And you can see that they exactly all cross in the middle. I really didn't fudge those numbers. It really did come out that way. And so now I can take a line from this intersection and come straight across. And this shows me my output power in horsepower. And this uh, little exercise shows that the engine was putting out 100 horsepower during that climb out. And that, I think, is quite reasonable. Uh, in theory, the engine is derated to 90 horsepower by adjusting the maximum uh, fuel setting screw on the fuel control on the engine. Um, and I think that's a fairly crude 
uh, imprecise way to do it. it. It's going to give you some rough uh, maximum amount of fuel that the engine can get because it's going to hit that screw. But it makes sense to me that you could get 100 horsepower out of that engine uh, even if the, the engine was initially adjusted uh, for 90. And again, I'm, I'm not uh, totally clear on how that adjustment was made, whether it's based on fuel flow using a manometer or whether it was done on a dyno. I don't know. But again, I think this all makes sense. So during my test, I believe I was pulling about 100 horsepower. Uh, and that's more than uh, the rate rated uh, design limit for the transmission. Obviously you don't want to do this all the time, but I felt it was important to find out what the limits were on my particular helicycle as I'm slowly expanding my personal uh, envelope. So now I know that it will climb out at 1700 feet per minute with 20 gallons of fuel on board. Uh, I won't be doing that again. I don't recommend anybody else do it. You'll notice that, uh, that my rate of climb was well into the red. Um, I normally limit my climb rate to uh, between 1,000 and 1,200 feet per minute. Uh, and I think that's much more reasonable and it doesn't stress out the transmission. So this was a once-only test. Uh, I satisfied myself. This data all makes perfect sense to me and uh, I won't be doing it again. So that's the end. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you found this of some value. Uh, and if you want more information on my particular helicycle, you can go to my website at www.juanr.com. I have about 400 pages of builder notes and, uh, and detailed information on my helicycle. Uh, you can find it there. Thanks for watching.